Hello and welcome to the third video in my conversion of one of my Ranger T1 wings into the VTOL version. Now, I've got a little series that's running here, I'll put links down below. First video we actually installed all the hardware for the VTOL conversion kit itself. Then last time we got the Matek F405 VTOL flight controller, flashed it with Ardu plane, and then we went through and did most of the configuration so it's in a good state. Now, as the flight controller sits on the bench right now, we've plugged in things like the GPS and compass. We've also got an S bus receiver plugged in there as well. And I've made a couple of other tweaks too. The main one being an extra flying JST lead that goes to the front off one of the spare power pads. And that's going to the front so that I can install FPV equipment later on. That's just a handy power port. Now, the whole point of this video is to get that flight controller inside the Ranger and to finish the setups, do all of the trimming and those kind of things. And at the end of this, we'll try for a test hover to make sure that that's all working. Now, all the connections are going to be connected as per this diagram, but don't worry too much. We're going to come back to this thing before we finish. I'm going to go through each of the steps. Now, this time we're going to install that flight controller into position, and we are going to have to do a little bit of tweaking here. By default, there's a power distribution board in the bottom of the plane here at the back. That power distribution board is gonna to have to come out. The flight controller we're putting in here has one of those included in it. So we're gonna to have to make the mounts and we're also potentially gonna to have to remove the connector boards at the sides as well, which typically make all the connections into the wings at the wing roots, just to make things easier too. A couple of tips before we get too far into this. Uh, I would remove the wings just to make things easier to work with on the bench. And remember that there is a carbon fiber spar that goes through the middle of the body. So we need to make sure that as we fit things in here, we're not going to stop that from being able to be put back in place. Now, the first job here is to remove the power distribution board and those connectors on the side from the body. I also marked which connector came from which side. I don't think it actually matters, but I just wanted to make sure that I put everything back together in exactly the same way as it all came off. Once I had all of those pieces out, I could easily see what I needed to do. And I noticed that we needed to crimp a servo connector onto the end of the ESC wire that comes from the ESC that comes from the tail. So it just did a standard couple of crimps on there to the black and white wires. That means now that that rear ESC or motor three can be plugged into the flight controller when it gets fitted. I unsoldered the power leads that come from the power distribution board that we've just removed into those kind of side connection pods and keep that safe because we're going to need the cable from it again in a minute. Now I've got the two pods without that PDB connecting them. I noticed that one of the cables is a Y cable that is for the ailerons. Now we're going to have two ailerons outputs on the flight controller, one for each side. So I just clipped off one of the sides that I didn't need. On the other connector then, that means that I have three wires. Now I could just either crimp another servo connector onto the end of this. However, the cable that's connected onto the PDB that provides the five volts out into everything else is perfect for this. So I just swap that over and then we have the two sides ready to start to be installed onto the flight controller, both with a full set of connections ready to plug into the pins. Just a word of caution, be careful with the covering on the power wires. I tried to separate mine a little bit more and the insulation came loose. So just be careful with this as you're moving things around if you need a little bit more room. Next job then was to solder each of the power cables from those wing root connection blocks into the power pads on the flight controller. I've used the flight controller pads that are towards the front. I want to leave the one that's closest to the tail when it's going to be installed so that I can solder that into the tail pieces. I did make sure that I was laying it out on the bench so that the right pod connection pod was on the right side. Again, I don't think that's necessarily important. And I also did make sure that I did leave that rear set of power connections free for the tail ESC. Now to install the flight controller into position, I want it as far back as I could possibly get it in this model to give me loads of room for battery and FPV equipment. I have designed this 3D printable mount. I'll put a link down below if you want to download it and print it yourself. It's designed to fit right at the back and I am going to attach my flight controller when it's ready via two strips of double-sided foam tape from 3M. I use this all the time to mount my flight controllers. It's fab stuff. 
With everything ready to be pushed down, I then held it in place and soldered those last two power cables from that rear ESC into the last spare power pads on the bottom. And with that done, then I could push it into place and make sure that that double-sided foam tape got a nice firm grip of that 3D printed mount that we've put in the bottom. With that in place, then what I could do is just carefully put the side pieces back in again quite happy to see that they're going back where i got them from and then do the two phillips screws up on each side just to reinstall them back into place now we're ready to start plugging in all those servo connectors now there's plenty of room in here for all this to happen again just double check that you are leaving enough room for that carbon fiber rod now i am probably going to install the gps at the rear of the model like I did with my iNav setup. I'm going to have to check that it's far enough away from the power that's going into the tail that it doesn't affect the compass reading. But for now, I'm just gonna put it in there for simplicity. The next job then is to carefully follow the connection diagrams and to plug each of the cables into position. Now you can see here, this in the bottom right hand side is how we configure the outputs in the last video. So what we're going to do is just follow along with each of them. In the connectors, in the wings, if you look on the side, they're actually labelled. One is labelled for the motor, so that's going to be the motor connections. One is labelled for the servo, and that's going to be for the aileron. And then the ones that are labelled for the LEDs, if you remember, we repurposed those. Those are for the tilt servos. So just take your time and plug them in as per the diagram. We are going to confirm everything's gonna work in a moment. Just take your time with this to make sure that you don't get things in the wrong way. Now to do the next pieces, we need to install and power it from a battery. So I would recommend getting hold of your multimeter, just putting it over the pins on the main connector and doing a check like this. What you should see is initially the value is very low, so it looks like a dead short, but very quickly as the capacitors and other pieces of circuitry kind of come alive, it should rise up like this. If it behaves like this, you're in a good place. However, I'd still recommend for the initial settings, do use a smoke stopper just to be safe. Also, triple check that you've plugged in all the cables in the right places, the right way round. We don't want to power everything and have the magic smoke come out. Now, what we need to do is make sure that one of the modes that's set in the modes tab is stabilized just for basic settings. And then we need to power on the radio. And then we also need to power on the model. Again, I'm using my Vifly Smoke Stopper 2 here while it all boots up. I'm also going to have it plugged into the computer at the same time as well, because I pretty much guarantee we're going to have to reverse at least one of the servos on this. And we're going to do that via the servo output tab in Mission Planner. So we're going to move the controls on the radio and make sure which of the controls are moving in the right direction. Both of my ailerons are reversed on this. So what I'm going to go and do is go into Mission Planner and click on reverse ailerons for each of those. Click those radio buttons. That'll immediately reverse it. And then on the desk, I can just test it and it's going to work absolutely fine. Elevator is working well too. So the other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here is set the trim positions so that the control surfaces are in line with the wings. Now the left aileron is going to need to be tweaked a little bit. Again, you can just type the numbers in here and just watch it and set it by eye. And at the moment, my elevator is a little bit high as well. So I'm just going to tweak those. So at the end of this, we should see that the control surfaces move with the radio as you'd expect in a high five check and they're all roughly in line with the control surfaces. That's going to be fine for the maiden flight. Now the servo travel that's available on the tilt servos that tilt the front two motors is only just enough. So I'd recommend going into Mission Planner and setting the full min and max travel on that to the maximum. So I've set it as the minimum of 800 and the maximum of 2200. You'll have to reverse one of them and I would copy this if you've installed the servos the same way that I've done here. Once you've done that, then on the bench, power everything up and then flick from the stabilized mode that we've been testing so far into Q loiter mode and watch how the servos move. Again, if they're not both moving upwards together, then just stop everything and go and reverse that particular tilt servo in the servo output tab in Mission Planner. 
In stabilised mode, you'll probably find that both of the motors are tilting slightly down. That's absolutely fine. Undo the cages that hold the motors in place and put them as close as you possibly can to completely horizontal in line with the nacelle so it all looks completely straight. If you need to, you can adjust the values in the servo output page to get it absolutely spot on. Then go into Q Loiter and what you should find is the motors will rise up. Now they'll go to their maximum position in the opposite direction and what you'll find is that they will go very far back which is what we want. This is the maximum travel that's allowed on these servos. Now what you want to do is just place one of the props on top of the motors and you want it so that there is just about one or two millimeters clearance but at the rear of the prop as it goes over the wing because this is as far back as it's ever going to go for controlling your and you might have to change the numbers do it a little bit at a time and just keep checking it on the bench go between the stabilize and the cute loiter mode until you have it spot on do that for both motors you're almost certainly going to have to undo the cages for the tilt mechanism just to get everything spot on spend a bit of time on this so that both the motors are the same and they're perfectly in line the winner cells when it's in stabilized mode and that they're both at the same angle pointing backwards with that one or two millimeters clearance at the rear of the blade when it's in Q loiter. Last thing we need to do is go into mission planner, go into the full parameter tree again and find Q tilt your angle and we need to put a value in there that's going to have the motors so they're perfectly vertical when you go into Q loiter mode. That's basically the offset for RD Pilot that's going to tell it what vertical should be for the motors. And once we've done that, that's all of the servo stuff done. So the next step is to just test all the motors are running and they're running in the right direction. The key thing is to have the two front props moving in a counter rotating direction. Doesn't really matter about the tail, but we'll continue with the recommendations from the people who have gone before. However, I did find a massive problem with this. I was really struggling to get this part to work until I made this change. I changed output three or servo output three to be motor four. Now this is a change from what I was reading everywhere else. I just couldn't get it to work with how we'd set it up so far. So my big tip is at this point, change that back motor to be motor four here in the servo outputs and you're good to go. With that set, then make sure the model is powered. Make sure that the props aren't connected. I've put a little bit of tape onto the motors here just so I can feel which way they're rotating and then go into the optional hardware tab and select motor test. What should happen is the front right motor should turn first and then the back motor should turn second and then the front left hand motor should turn last. And if they're rotating in the right direction, we want to have the front right motor to be clockwise and the other two motors to be counterclockwise or anticlockwise. Unfortunately, a couple of my motors are the wrong way around. So to fix that, what we need to do is go into the full parameter tree, set servo underscore blh underscore auto to one. That's going to enable BL heli pass through, disconnect in mission planner, and then fire up something like the BL heli suite, and then click connect and reverse the motors as you would do on any other multi-rotor. It's exactly the same here and retest it to make sure that that's okay. Don't forget to write the setups once you've changed things in the BL heli suite. So we're almost ready to go out and do a test hover. There are a couple of things I would do on the bench. Uh, first of all, I would make sure that all the screws are tight on the model, that nothing is going to come loose. My motor nacelles for the VTOL conversion kit are slightly loose in the wings. I'm not too worried about that. I may put a bead of glue under them just to stop them waggling around. Having them flexing is something that we're going to have to deal with in tuning. Also make sure that you can arm the model on the bench. Now you can only arm RD Pilot once it has a GPS lock. So I would plug it in, make sure you can get a GPS lock and then flick the arming switch that we've configured already. You should see it say armed on the main screen in Mission Planner. If it does, then it's great. If it doesn't, it'll tell you exactly what the problem is. Make sure you can get the GPS lock and armed on the bench. And then once you've got those and you're happy that it all works, install the props with the clockwise and counterclockwise props on the motors as we've just set them up. Last thing to check on the bench would be when you pop it into Q hover mode via the radio, those two front motors swing up 
into that nice vertical position. Once you have that set, you're good to go. So I would recommend for the very first flight, don't go mad. I would literally do just a very simple hover for 10, 15 seconds maximum. Power up the model and wait for the GPS to lock. When the GPS locks, you'll hear Ardu Pilot make like a little burp, 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 three tones via the buzzer to let you know that that's happened. Arm the model using the radio and the props will spin then increase the throttle and it will lift off into the air hover it well below head height don't go mad for your first flight we're just testing that we haven't messed anything up check all the directions of the hover that you can yaw it around that front back left and right all works and note any odd behavior there was only a couple of things that I spotted in mine. Your stability needs looking at. That might be interference on the compass where it is above the power wires that run to the rear ESC. So I may either shield that compass or move it into another location on my model here. And also there's a little bit of uh, jittering around here. So the tuning might need a little bit of attention as well. But I can look at that when I get to flying. And I need to say a massive thank you to all of you that have been in touch with suggestions and ideas. Apparently also as part of the your problem in the hover could be due to something to do with a weather vaning setup. I'd hoped that by leaving it this long for other people to kind of go through the process, that the process that I'd found and was following here would be effortless, but that's not quite the case. I think there is a little bit more work here to do to get it set up properly. There is a setup file that you can download and look at the that's available from the he wing website and i'll put a link to that in the description but i'll continue to play with this and as i find things out i will post update videos but hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that have wanted to go through the process of how you put the kit together and how you install the flight controller this has been a very fun build and hopefully by following along with these couple of videos it'll avoid some of the pitfalls that i've nearly fell into myself Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.